We receive revelation. We receive insight. Lord, speak to us this morning. Let your will be done. Let your name be glorified. We worship you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Glory to God. All right. We're going into the study this morning. And uh, last week, we started looking at some virtues. We saw the virtues of character. Today, we're looking at power virtues. All right. So let's read the scriptures. Luke in chapter 24, verse 46 to 49. Luke 24, verse 46 to 49. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Then verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God wants us to have power. Power. Luke in chapter 4, verse 14. After Jesus Christ had fasted 40 days, verse 14 says, and he returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. The fame of him spread. Why? Because he returned in power. The kingdom of God is not about enticing words of human wisdom, but the demonstration of spirit and power. Now, that's very important. Because the kingdom of God is not a religion. It's a kingdom. All right? A religion is human beings, you know, trying to worship a deity the way they want to worship that deity. All right? Christianity is not a religion. It's a kingdom. God is establishing a kingdom, a way of living. You understand? That's why we say Christianity is a walk with God. And when you're walking with God, who is a God that is, is the creator of everything and does supernatural things? Of course, your life will be supernatural. Your life will be above the normal, above the natural. Okay? So it's very important to note that Jesus, the king and leader of the kingdom, established the kingdom on these foundations, the demonstration of power. The manifestations, sorry, the manifestation of anything that looks like God's kingdom without power, without his power, is what we call religion. I'll read that again. The manifestation of anything that looks like God's kingdom without its power is what we call religion. All right? It is also called a form of godliness that denies the power of that same godliness. Power is the signature of the kingdom of God. God's power working in our lives, our situations, and in our bodies. That's it. It's the signature of the kingdom. God's power working in our bodies. All right? God's power working in our situations. God's power helping us to do exploits. God's enablement. That's the kingdom. Remove power and you will have Sorry, remove power and you will have change messages. You will have change, you, have, you will have a change message that lacks the power to change people. Deliverance message that cannot set the oppressed free. Power is not just necessary in the kingdom, it is part of the heart of the kingdom. And you know that there is an enemy. See, if there was no devil in this world, and all that we have are just human beings. And they are making right decisions. We will not need power. The only power we need is the one that God has already given mankind when He created us and said we should have dominion on earth. And that just enables us to be able to study nature, life, the earth, see what is there, and be able to use it to make our lives better, create a beautiful world on earth, and which man is already achieving. 
You understand? Mankind has already been achieving that. But there's an enemy that wants to destroy mankind. There's an enemy that wants to destroy nations. There's an enemy that wants to keep some people in bondage. There's an enemy that wants sickness to keep spreading. There's an enemy that wants to molest lives. There's an enemy that wants to destroy mankind. And that's why you need power to confront that enemy, to conquer that enemy. Jesus told the disciples to tarry in Jerusalem until they are endued with power from an eye. He told them the only way they will be effectual witness for him is by receiving the power of the Holy Spirit, by receiving the power that the Holy Spirit will bring into their lives. It is so important they were to wait for it before they can start doing anything at all. So even to be a witness to Christ, there, there is a need for power to be demonstrated for people to be able to know that you are truly talking the truth. That you are truly telling the truth. All right? Because the truth is not just saying what the fact is. It is saying what is truly true. It was, import, it was so important they were to wait for it before they can start doing anything. There are virtues that kickstart the increase of power in us. So there are some virtues. They kickstart, they make to grow the increase of power in our lives. All right? These are the power virtues that we need to master and keep in our lives. The first of them is the mastery of waiting upon the Lord. Moses stayed in God's presence for 40 days twice and his face began to shine with literal light like God has on his own face too. Jesus waited and returned in the power of the Spirit. Now, waiting in God's presence is very important. It's one of the virtues that help us to get the power of God to manifest more in our lives. If we do not exercise ourselves in waiting on the Lord, then we'll find our lives lacking the clear manifestation and signature of the kingdom of God. All right? That's why you need to factor in waiting upon the Lord as part of your spiritual observation. You know, I was talking about spiritual observation. I did a video on it. It's on Facebook and YouTube, so you can look for it. You know, the different spiritual observation. I didn't mention this one there. But waiting on the Lord is bother. At least once a month or once in two months. You must pull some time apart to wait upon the Lord. To stay in His presence. To, to tarry in His presence. It's very vital. Alright? It's very, very, very vital. The second virtue is fasting. Fasting helps our faith to ascend quickly and easily in the realms of of greater powers. Faith ascends when you fast. Why? Fasting humbles the flesh. Fasting makes our spirit to be able to ascend easily. Faith also is able to reach things easily when we fast. Fasting humbles the flesh, keeping it in the place of almost zero distraction, which allows us to wait on the Lord. The power of virtue is tarrying in the in a particular spiritual exercise. Hallelujah. Spending three hours. Okay, the, the, the other power of virtue is tarrying in a particular spiritual exercise. So we are waiting on the Lord. We are fasting. And then any spiritual exercise at all that you can tarry in is also a power of virtue. All right. Spending three hours in pray in prayer in tongues instead of praying 30 minutes. That's that becomes a power of virtue. If normally you pray like 10 minutes in tongues and then you decide that once every week I'm going to stay at home and pray like one hour in tongues non-stop, you have already set up a power virtue. If you're praying in tongues as not going to one hour every day and you now decide that once every or twice every every month I'm going to stay at home you know, and wait on the Lord and pray three hours non-stop in tongues, that three hours in tongues become a power virtue. All right? That, that connects you to more power, more power, more power, more power, more power, all right? Choosing to worship all day <clears throat> instead of 10 minutes 
whether we, whenever we engage in certain spiritual exercise for a longer period than we normally do, we they, they help draw us from things, you know, and bring us to the Father, thus multiplying the manifestation of power in our lives. Every time we do a spiritual exercise beyond the normal, if you normally pray for 30 minutes and then you settle down to pray for seven hours, then you are going to draw power. You are going to draw power. The more you tarry and stay in his presence, the more power you do. I was having a discussion with God on this, you know, um, some days ago. And he said, son, it's not even how many days you are there. Is that you stayed focused. You stayed focused. It's how long you stayed focused there. When you are worshiping, how long did you stay focused on it? When you are praying in tongues, how long do you stay focused on it? While you are studying the scripture, how long did you stay focused on it? That's what brings more power into manifestation in our lives. And God is doing amazing things for us. I want us to pray this prayer this morning and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to engage more and more all virtues of power, thus increasing your power in my life. In the name of Jesus, let's pray that in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right, we're going straight into confessions this morning. Our time is already fast spent. So say with me, say in the name of Jesus. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. All things are new. I have been washed with the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I declare my body, my organs and systems, bones and cells, genes and DNA cannot be corrupted deformed or defiled by any force or any element in the name of jesus the blood of jesus flows in my blood i have a new bloodline i have been cut off the diseases and the negative experiences of the whole bloodline the covenant in the blood of jesus is the covenant that speaks in my life. I am born of God. God is love. I am love. I walk in love. I am born of God. God is holy. I am holy. I walk in purity. I am born of God. God is righteous. I am the righteousness of God. I walk in excellence. In the name of Jesus. I am meek and lowly in heart. I have rest in my soul. I am born of God. I am a God, offspring of the almighty God. As a God, I have unhindered access to the Father God. I hear his voice. I have conversations with him every day and I engage his presence. In the name of Jesus, I am the blessed of the Lord. Christ redeemed me from the curse. I cannot be cursed. I am the blessed. And my blessing cannot be reversed. In the name of Jesus, I have the power to get wealth. So wealth floods my life. In the name of Jesus, money follows me and serves me as my slave. I am blessed with abundance of it. The best among men work with me and for me. I am blessed with lands and properties. 
and all means of transportation as a seed of Abraham in the name of Jesus. I am I have been healed by the stripes of Jesus 2,000 years ago. So I remain in health in the name of Jesus. I am surrounded with favor as a shield. I'm highly favored everywhere I go. In the name of Jesus, I have wisdom for every situation I face. For Christ supplies me solutions. In the name of Jesus, I and all that are mine, we dwell in God's secret place, under God's shadow. Our lives are hidden with Christ inside God. Therefore, no evil can befall us. No plague can come near our dwelling. We are secured with long life. The Lord satisfies us and shows us his salvation. We shall live in the name of Jesus. I am the head and never tail. I am from above. I'm above all in all situations and in all fields and industry where I'm engaged. My home is God's habitation. I and my spouse, we are one as the Father and the Son are one. Our children are taught of the Lord. Great is their peace. They are godly seeds that know the Lord from their tender age and serve him all their lives. They are mighty on the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of the Lord is in my life. I am God's beloved, God's chosen, God's elect. I am victorious today. I am triumphant today. I overcome all today. I am successful. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have the spirit and the power of the new move of God. I manifest the fullness of Christ's character. I th thinking what Jesus will think, saying what Jesus will say, and doing what Jesus will do in all situations. I manifest the fullness of Christ's power. I cast out devils. I lay hands on the sick. They recover. I do the works of Jesus and the greater works. I manifest the fullness of Christ's character, Christ, Christ's wisdom. I provide solutions. I create answers. By the wisdom of Christ there to me, I do exploits and achieve mighty things. I manifest the fullness of Christ's presence. Everywhere I am, the presence of God soaks the place. Sinners come to Christ. The sick are healed. The oppressed are set free. Yokes are broken. Bondages are destroyed. Demons flee. Powers of hell are seized. And the glory of God covers the earth as waters cover the sea. In Jesus' mighty name. Pray tongues for some few seconds. Sakota Yata. Ariya Paposko Fia Mene Kaliso. Raduasi Kataske Dukomba. Ayafefo Kufata Skatadia. Rababonto Fieneke. 